Do do. Do do do. Seems a bit weird to colour today, doesn't it? I need to pull it forward. I'm getting a bit of a mishmash here. Oh, there, that's a bit better. As long as I don't start joggling the table. I turned the blooming thing down and I'm not too sure now whether. That's a bit better, isn't it? It was really bright and I set all the lights up and next minute it's gone Pete Tong. Oh! Oh! The house is a mess, I hate it. Hate it, I'm going to dump all this stuff. I'm going to sell all the stuff I've bought to her. Oh, I keep saying that, but I need time. Every time I go to do it, I get another few shows. Mind you, they're pretty good. They put the shows together. So that's good, isn't it? Then having them, you know, willy nilly all over the place. That shouldn't be in there, and neither. What's that doing in there? Oh, come on, with it. This is terrible. It's like the buses. You're looking for one, you can't find what you want, you find ten of the other things that you've got. See what I mean? Oh, there is poultry too. I didn't even know you had Oh, look, another one. Oh, really? I'm going to sort my house out and, and all this stuff because I can't live like this. It's driving me nutty. I don't know how I use a lot of food, but it gets to the point where I'm just getting more and more stuff in and I, I don't want it. I, I really don't want it. I don't need it. So, I'm not having it. It's driving me nuts. Anyway. Oh, let's see who's in. Loving it. Come on, I was chatting to myself. Hello Michael, how are you? Hi Jenny, hi Judith. Oh, you found me. Hi Linda. Hi Donna. Hi Inga. I think that's Inga, I hope I'm saying it right. Hi Sue. Right, not many in, but it's one of them days, isn't it? I'm not going to be on long today because I've got absolute serious let you know some life altering things to, to sort out so no I don't, I don't want no comment you don't need to come and ask me anything or say anything honestly so because it's, it's not needed seriously not needed right okay oh oh don't tell me I've left him in the car oh bloomy neck bloomy neck with this no bloomy rubbish at this right I'll have to go, I'll have to go freehand, <laughs> I'll go combat, I'll go combat, right okay, oh excellent Inga, excellent, I'm always a bit embarrassed by my accent and, 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 and saying other people's names because pronunciation isn't my forte. Hello Denise, my lovely mucker. If anybody wants to go out into the, sounds like you're going to go out into the world, uh, go out into the group and just mention where I am and I'm live on the event. Because I thought it'd be easier and it's, I don't think I'm ever going to get it right, am I? Right, I'm just giving my pencils a quick sharpen. I might use them, I might not. Oh, look at this thing right okay now i know personally if anybody wants to just copy this the, the stream key you can go straight over so hang on while i do this and i'll copy it just bear with me um, working again come on come on please will you do this
I think I put it on the right one. Hmm, let's see. I put a link out. Whether it's the right one, I don't know. Hello, Karen. Hi, Susan. Right, okay. Well, you know, just recently I've been going bananas with my stitching. So has Tina Barrett, and I've noticed Karen is as well. Um, now, I've always done lots and lots of stitching, as, as people know, and it's, it's like my go-to craft when um, I do other things. I want to sort of be creative, but I don't want to sort of it take all my day up. And I love the idea of a sampler. Oh, hello, Jean. Good to have you. Oh, that's not good, Karen. I hope you're okay. Yeah, it's a bit mad around here as well. So I've got my blank piece of paper. I've got my pencil set up. The first thing we're going to do is I haven't got my um, trusty templates with me. They're around somewhere very safe. Very, very safe, she says. Well, I was looking at a book I really do love and the book of love is it's all about stitching it's called i know some people might find this offensive but it's not meant to be and it's the embroidery stitch bible so um depending on your faith i do apologize not meant to be in any way um offensive or anything but some of the patterns in here are just wonderful because they don't give you they don't give you a, a, a pattern it's all, I love this book. They don't give you a pattern, they give you the actual stitch. And I really like the idea of let's just do some simple drawing and some simple stitching. So I'm just going to use whatever's to hand. So I think the first thing is I'm just going to do a shape. And I always like to dissect. Hi Emma, hello! Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up, I like to divide my page, but not straight. It's either, you know, perpendicular or, uh, so it's, I always like to, to, to give myself A nice line. I always start with a nice line. I think it's yin and yang. Now also while we're here, um, there's a lot of people going through a lot of rubbish at the moment and um, we need to support them. So um, whilst I'm doing this, I'm just going to go through some of the things, little CBT things. I'm not teaching it at all. I'm just saying the things that I do when I'm getting sort of edgy or worked up or, and I'm going to first thing I've done is I'm going to put my feet on the floor right and I'm just going no shoes no nothing and I'm just going to wiggle my toes on the carpet and the reason I do this is because I can concentrate on that you might want to sort of pick up a piece of fabric and just feel it like that just so your mind's occupied by texture and I do it with my feet and I wiggle my toes in the carpet and it just brings me right down. Hi Jackie. So it brings me right down and it's able me to concentrate on something else and it soothes me right down. I'm not saying it works for everybody, it's just me. So with that in mind, you'll notice when you're wiggling your toes and you're concentrating on this, you, you, you can sort of allow yourself a bit of time to forget what's going on so the next thing is while I'm still wiggling I'm just thinking about ebbs and flows so I'm stitching so I tend to always do I don't know whether it's See, I don't know whether I like to do lots of lines and then then we rub out the wrong ones. 
No. What happens is, if you don't... I've already done it, but really, you should do a little bit of what we call warm-up. And that's by really going mad with you. Oh yeah, it'd be brilliant, that Jean. There's lots of great ways of um, dyeing with natural products. It's fantastic. Right, so the next thing is, can you see how much softer? That, I wasn't wiggling my toes, this one is. Hi Liz, how are you? Oh yeah, 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 and your bed sheets, oh yeah. Oh yeah, especially when, you know, you've had them on a couple of days or however, and just before you wash them, they go really silky. I don't mean for months. Right, so I've got my lines. Don't worry, don't ever rub out lines. What you need to do is keep your lines there till you're happy and then rub out the wrong ones. Yeah? It's not about trying to... If, every time you rub it out, um, you're just going to re recreate the same mistake. So what you need to do is learn from it. It will sound like teaching you to suck your eggs or whatever it is. So the first thing is... Right so there we go so now I've put my circle in and if I hadn't have, if I hadn't have done my bit. Hi Kim. Oh, I hope you're okay, sweetheart. Uh, if I hadn't have been loosened up, I wouldn't have been able to draw in a circle because it'd have been. It's a bit out, but who cares? It's all right. Oh yeah. Well, years ago, only kings and queens were allowed to use the word uh, colour purple because. It was, it took so much, uh, it took so much, um, especially the um, snail one, it took so many snails to get purple that, right, if you're drawing as well and you want it to be quite fluid with your drawing, don't be worried to draw over things, that's better. So if you look, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm actually doing the opposite to that. So, see that straight line? Rubbish. I'm wondering whether I should do... I like that one better. See how much softer they are? If you lift your arm up off the page, rather than trying to draw like that. That's like writing. If you lift and use it this way or this way see that's really I keep do, going over it and I'll tell you what it's all about muscle memory I think this is really telling about how Perhaps I might leave it like that. So I've got this mismatch of lines. Right. Got this mismatch of lines and I'm gonna go in with a pen. You could choose whatever pen you want. I'm using quite a large one today. I normally use a one, but I thought I'm using the outline. So what I tend to do is when you're doing this, don't forget to keep wiggling your toes, is choose one and stop at any inter interception now so again and even when even when I'm drawing it I change it because I don't know how I actually 
this is it see and we're going to change the shape now because so we've took this shape in now I've got a circle in there do I want the circle to be part of it I think so so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the circle in not a bad circle considering I did it freehand so now I've got to think do I want that on top and that underneath I think I quite like the idea of that there and then this here like that Draw the second line in, and now I can draw the other shape. So now I can leave this just here for a minute because I can then decide how I'm going to do this, whether I want lines in and out. Now I only, like for instance, I just tidy up where I know I've drawn a line, and I can redraw it in anyway. So here. And you see, don't see what I mean about rubbing out later. If you rub out later, all your mistakes have gone. And your original drawing, whatever it is, stays put and it's nice and clean. You see, it's not it's not as it's a bit like clearing your mind, it's a bit unfocused at first, but then it's very focused. But you see I like that the way that this Now, I've been doing this for years, and when, I, when I'm unsure of a line, or how I want it to react, or if I make a balls up, oh, um, if I make a, a peak tongue of it, excuse me, I always do a double line, and then I know, then I know that um, it, it's integrated into the picture rather than it being a, an ice or. So now I'm going to, this is my favourite bit, this. Favourite, favourite bit. There you go. So, I'm really happy with that. Got a nice shape. I'm really happy with that. I'm just going to clean up lines. I'm either cleaning up lines and just going to put the joints up where we need them. And then I'm going to put in the spaces. I only work in threes basically, or odd numbers. So I tend to do everything in odd numbers. So if you was doing this in a pattern, I would use threes. And then maybe interpret these into French knots. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six. So your patterning can be in any way. That's how I do it anyway. And I just do what I want, where I want. I like to keep continuity. So if, if I'm doing one shape, I like to repeat the shape, but vary it. So... Um, I'm doing circles now because that all fits one I'm going to keep it all whereas this very much changed so now I've got the circles but what I can do is really just fill them in like that you get used to it if you're not. And here, you can see I made a bit of a, a bit 
of a peep tongue. So I've included it in the drawing and then that way it looks like there's no mistakes. Well, there isn't any mistakes actually. I'm just a little bit concerned that this is sort of losing the shape here. So if I just bring that in, I'll put a wobble there because I went over it. There we go. I feel better now with that. It's not a bad circle, that's it, considering. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it. I'm going to look at some of the stitches that I've seen. Um, and look like we'll take this one here. From If you want to know about these books, if you go on to my Amazon, if you go on to my Lou, Louise Withers page, you'll see on the left-hand side underneath my website, you'll see the link tree. And that goes, um, you click on that and you'll get all my um, affiliated links um, just to let you know and I put like journaling things in there like a list of journaling of um, products and things so if you get stuck you can just um, look on there and that'll show you some of the things I use so I'm looking at this and I'm changing my idea so maybe you want to use an outline of a circle it's always an idea to do that I'm using to read like I say I'm not going to spend too much time today simply because I've got some really important stuff to do so here we're doing the stitches which are corresponding with these so I'll move that out of the way now um, like that don't have to be perfect because mine never are And when you come to this, don't try and draw them in. Don't uh, fit them in, sorry. So there we go. We've got our little. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do square ones. And these are like. Um, one of the canvas stitches I saw. Mood lint is all about the mood that you're in. Taking that and making it a positive thing. Um, you don't have to be in a negative mood. But sometimes you just need to chill out. Hello Glynis! I think a peak tongue is as two. So here I'm just going to go in the background. I'm going to join up so it's got a layer underneath. Okay, now here I'm just going to do a castellation. And this is like a running stitch or a whole bind stitch. Holbein stitch is where you do one running stitch and then you go back over it with another running stitch. Um, it's quite a nice little canvas piece as well when you do that. And here I'm just doing the lines with a little extended French knot. And I'm sort of looking at the patterns that you would get when you're drawing these. For a, um, when you're looking for patterns. So let's have a quick look to see what we've got. All right. Don't forget this is all, all in colour. This is going to look really cool. Here. Add little buttons or little stars, like little cushions. You don't have to. just fills in that gap. Or small versions. Oh, 
on like that. It's great if you just do simple, simple drawings and then use colour as a way of bringing it all out together. So you remember we did cross stitch and all these different things. So that's warm. I like the idea of long running stitch and I'll show you a little trick with this. Simple as So what we're going to do is, we're just going to go a little circle that way and that way. And we can colour it in later and it makes it look like it's going in and out of fabric. You don't have to. You can leave that there if you want. Or we can put a little cross in it. There we go. So try and make it continual. So if you see it going to come out of here, you just do so it's moving that way and this one is so the circle And do like a little weave or a florentine or something like that on top now so we've got like this patch, patch down and what i am going to do is just put three stitches three little stitches like that to make it look like it's tapped or patched down and then here these can be quite scruffy because they're like tacking stitches so we've got the tacking stitches now okay now we'll do something like a herringbone make it a herringbone yeah so you go so this is opposites right and so in between you put that these stitches don't have to be perfect i'm not in it to try and make and they change all the time that doesn't worry me in the least and then i'm going to put a little dot on the top See, I'm already feeling now much better, even though I know nothing's gone away and it's all still there. It's now settling my mind. It's not taking anything away. And I'm just doing like a zigzag and a line, zigzag and a line. And so, yeah, we need to make sure that we're with supporting each other. I'm not in any way affiliated with anybody. All this rubbish that's going on, nothing to do with me. And as far as I know, there's no infiltration in this group. And if there is, I don't know about it. And unless admin are told and no one's causing problems, how do we know? Uh, I'm not looking for trouble, I don't want any, but I just don't want people to feel unsafe. I believe a lot of people blocked this group because they were told that it was infiltrated. Um, as far as I know, I haven't got a clue what that means. Cause... But anyway, I'm not going to get into that. So here I'm going to join up these here, and I'm going to put two lines, uh, two circles each side. I'm going to stitch these up. Now people ask me what the difference is between moodling, doodling and zen tangle and zen art. Well, zen art or zen tangle or zen doodle, they're all registered, right? They're all registered. Um, like a trademark, my mindful moodling is. So you can't really do that unless you're 
certified and if you do you're breaking the law um, because you need to be certified to teach it just like I'm not allowing people to do mine because it's you know if you've trademarked it then it's yours so that's why I don't do Zentangle or Zendoodle. I'll do it on my own, but not to teach because I'm not qualified to teach it and I've not been certified. So um, that's the difference. And really, you know, if you're doing it, you don't want to get yourself in trouble. Just ask whether the person that you know is doing it is certified as well. It doesn't cause any problems. It doesn't mean you have to. It's just... You know, it's a little, people have asked me and I'm trying to sort of explain why I don't. So we've got the stitch in here. Um, I'm going to do up here a really simple This is going to be like a, a patchwork, a crazy patch. Well, it's not quite a crazy patch because I'm doing like because I can't fill it all. And then what you can do is use colour to block this in, or you can even go. So that it looks like you've got different shapes and then stitch these together so all you need to do this is to be able to draw a line that's it nothing else you don't need to be able to do anything else draw around something that's a circle that's all you need to do because that, that's what this is Just a line with a pen because that's all the circle is just a line that joins up to self, itself and now I'm just starting to stitch those in can you see and I'll do these so we can have a zigzag like that and remember it's all about how you want to do it your way there's a little three here we'll have one there that's joining there and then what you can do is link them like that so you've got like a link there we go you don't have to link them all if you want to do it like that So, but I did a whole wall like that. It looked really cool. I did memories in tea bags years and years ago, about 30 years ago now. I've got like tea bags, tea bag paper, um, as it is now. I emptied them and I put little memories in them and I put little rings on them and joined them all together and made a quilt. Oh, easy about 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Nighty nighty. Oh, my neck it is. 1991. Right, so I'm happy with that. I need to put something in here. So, you don't have to put everything all the same. What you can do is, you know, just link like that. be really as simple as you want or as difficult as you want so I'm quite happy with this I'd colour all that in, in the background I think I'd have uh, let's see some more stitches oh there's the darning stitch and the whole Japanese darning and you've got a whole guy there's the whole guy um, oh that's a nice one to add so this is a bit different now because you've got to draw a but we'll see if we can do it. I'll choose a smaller place first in case I get it all wobbly. So it's a oh, 
well these aren't great but you get the idea of a chain stitch I think I could make it a bit smaller alter the sizes like I do so that it, it's got different sizes in it um, Okay, now this is the last bit probably that really I would do, but I'm going to draw fibres. So it looks a bit strange, but when I put the fibres across, you start to see the stringiness of it, if that's even a word. And I'm using like a big round stitch, because that's what your warp and weft is. It starts to look like that, but here... Do it from different de directions like that. Starts to look a bit more like strings. You can double those up if you want. So here. This is a lovely one because you don't like taking your pen for a walk. Did it years ago. And we're going like we've left a little string hanging down. And you can do it anywhere. I, I love this because this is very therapeutic. And what you can do is if you've got spaces you need to fill you can do it like this and you can bunch them up because if you're bunching them up like that it makes it look more like a, a scrim and a scrim is like a really fine a, a really open weave that they use in walls so i've got that quite like that and I'm going to put in some journal in now because I really think I need it. Corset stitch, yeah. Um, so the other word for some work like this where you pull threads out is called ardanga. And it, it's really nice because you just pull the threads out and it creates a pattern. I did it the other night on the show. It looked really cool. Right, so I've got this and I'm going to put in here. Pen. But here, the dream is to be happy with your lot and be true. So I'll put some there smile through your days my heart is happy so I've got these words in there which I'm really loving A 
bit more than you get. Try change of font as well. So can you see how it's really getting to be? And I'm just going to put some fine threads. Now, when you're doing threads, you, you, you sort of allow your pen to just wibble. His threads would be like that. And almost like you want to sort of brush them away. You want people to come along and go, oh, get out of the way. So here I'm going to just put in, I'm using a, um, is it a 9B? Yeah, 9B. And I'm not going to put much colour on this. In fact, I might not put any colour on it. Just using the 9B. Create a bit of depth on here and then clean up the top part so you've got light and dark. Get it? Here. And again. Just drop in a little bit of shading and just remember to clean up each side of your shading. Because if you don't, it starts, I don't like that, I'm going to take that off. But yeah, you can... The more you want shading, the heavier you should go, but personally, keep it tight to the edge. If you've got a tarty on, use a tarty on. Because the grease from your fingers, I haven't got one, it's in the, well, I've got one, but I don't know where it is. Well, I do, but I just can't be bothered getting up. So, I'm just bringing away the shading from the edge, so it looks like it's underneath, get me? So, it looks like it's there, creating it. And I'm trying to keep... just to the edge. You can't help but get it near or in the middle, but just keeping it to the edge like that. You can just do one edge if you want. Like that. You're not doing it all. I always used to say, the kids used to try this at first and say, no, 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 you can't do it like that. You can't do it like that. You've got to learn to shade first. And it's like, yeah, but that's easy. No, 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 no. Learn to shade, learn to shade. And you still have to learn to shade. And then in year 11, I'd say, right, now you can smudge. But then they, would, they wouldn't want to because it wouldn't look as good as the shading. So that's what I've tried to instill in people is try to learn to shade before you do this. Because this is, it's going to stop you learning if you do everything like this. You need to learn. It's like learning to drive in an automatic. You'll never be able to drive a manual. But if you're driving and if you learn how to drive a manual, you can do both. If that makes any sense to people, but do you know what I mean? It's like don't. If you learn the easy way, you're never going to know anything else, and it'll always be harder. Whereas you earn, you'll be laughing when you you think, oh, I'll use use it. I'll do it the other way. And it's not the best because I've only like messing about with it but I think I would really need to clean this up properly because when you've got a dark edge you need a clean crisp edge now one of the ways you can do it is if you get a bit of paper you get a bit of paper and put it along like that not that way your banana that way on there and just clean to the edge can you see do it again so I'll put it on the edge of my shading, clean that, and that works really well because you can use a rubber and uh, um, a ruler or a piece of card, piece of mount board's good, but you just do that and you can see then how crisp it is. It just looks a lot neater. But just remember to do it the right way, otherwise you'll be rubbing out what you've rubbed what you shouldn't be, which is what I do on a regular basis. So you can see then, and then you just switch it round. Don't try and be a contortionist. Um, there we go. That's much better. Much happier with that now. Can you see how it's brought it? And then, you know, if you introduce it,
This could be any colour you want. Now I am using a 9B so I'm being very 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 dark with this but I've no well I know that I've got to do it darker when I'm on TV and, and, and on, on a camera because you just can't take it. Well you can you can't see it properly. Um you need to see it a little bit more so you can do the same with these and that is what clean it up your edges. There we go. So in here, I'm just going to do one strand. Do the same. Let's see how it cleans up now. So let's get this cleaned up. There we go, I'm happy with that. And you can see it needs a lot of work, but this is where you spend your time if you get the moment. If not, leave it for another day go back to it really mess about with what you like about it change what you don't but don't try and do it all in one day I'll tell you why because you need fresh eyes oh and don't forget we're doing Inktober this year again and um, so I'm going to be putting the prompts up for people there is going to be I'm officially linked with it as well so it's not like a rogue one where there's hundreds of them now but I had an email, not off Jake himself, but off the Jake who did it. Um, and I'm part of that now. So that's good. That's really good. So, um, I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that now. Um, oh, I'm just trying to say... Who, sorry, I'm missing some people here. Say a quick hello. Hi, Sylvia. Oh, it's brilliant, that. Hi, Hilary. Hi Linda. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Cutting lawns. Torty on, yep, it's a tightly rolled paper stump. Oh. No, some people. Some people do. Some people do fall asleep, that's happy, you go for it, it's whatever you feel, if that's what you want to do at the time, you do it, I don't care, well I do care that you're happy, but I don't care how you do it, as long as it's legal. So just clean up your work, you can introduce more colour, more shading, or take it away if it's too much, I think I need to clean that up a little bit more, just add a little bit less start to look like murky manner then and and the other thing is don't forget do you need an nine b are you better off with a two b or a three b or a h so just use your noggin you could put a bit of color in this if you wanted show you that i've got my color out actually because i've been using it all morning all morning i've been painting so i'll get a little bit of I should have some there it is indigo so just before we leave i will show you what i've been messing about with yeah don't forget if you're in manchester and you get a minute come and see us at the i don't know i've managed oh i have got a tortilla blow my neck come and see us at the at the at the monastery i'm really looking forward to it It'd be great to get back to my roots. Not that I ever religiously went, I didn't. But it's like full circle. So here I've got, this is an indigo and a flat brush. Um, and all I'm going to do is do the same. But this time I'm just going to put it where the pencil was and then blend out. 
sometimes this is easier for people than blending so you put a line uh, blending with a, a pencil uh, shading put a line on like that go all the way around it has to be watercolor or something like watercolor ink because if you don't put watercolor ink on it it won't move it's a permanent so there i'm adding a little bit now i use prussian blue Payne's grey indigo or sepia i don't use black very very rare unless it's graphics and then i use black so there we go you can just i'll just bring it out a little bit and show you I'm very dark here you see how it's blended so i'll do a bit here i think this is just a lot softer so draw your line i'll just quickly finish this i've got a really important thing to do sorry i'm not being rude I never do that, but I really have. And I'm dreading it. I am absolutely dreading it, but we all have obstacles, don't we? So here, again, draw it near. Right, we did your pencil, but instead of blending with your finger, you just blend with your brush blend it out and then you get this wonderful softness to it that black doesn't really allow you to do because black's quite a harsh colour so by bringing this into it you, you sort of really softening it up indigo this is and the colours are Sennelier which I've brought to you before the other colours I use are Core by Golden um, Windsor and Newton I haven't tried Daniel Smith I'd like to I know there's ladies in Holland like Dinner, they use um, Daniel Smith. I'd like to try them. The SAA are very good as well, very, very good. They know what they're doing. So, now this I could do all day. I think I adore blending, a bit too much. Now, if you don't want to blend, just put a very fine wash over it and you start to get that that, that feel without it being... Oh, that's a dark bit. Uh, start to get that feel without it being a line. It's like you've put on a wash. Keep your brushes clean because you don't want to put too much on. You can always add more. It's very hard to take it away, as I always go on about. So there we go. Pop that in again. Can you see? starting to look better so you would do this i'll do a bit, little bit up here um i might use i've got another one here yeah i might use a sepia just to show you what sepia looks like and then we'll have done an hour so here's a i think it's a sepia i hope it is yeah sepia is a wonderful color the proper sepias um sometimes you can get a sepia that's orange a proper sepia is more like a um, a cold brown or a grey brown there we go that's better so i'm just going to add some down here again i use it instead of black it's great for creating age So, I've done my brown sepia, I've got it on, and all I'm doing is bringing it down. Now, it's hard for you to see, but they do split, a lot of colours split into the integral parts. And you might find that you see different colours, like brushos and the other ones um, that I think Paper Artsy do a fantastic set as well. And they just... They, they split into their interim colours, all the colours that... No! Sticking my book in the wrong thing. You know, colours that go to make it. Especially if it's a, a secondary colour or a tertiary colour. Right. Okay, so this is the last bit I'm going to do. I'm just going to... I've gone around the circle there. Just to give it a bit of punch. And now I'm going to work in some water. Clean your brush because the water on it 
might not want it thick. There we go. So what we've got now is more of a brown look and you can blend them out as much as you want put them into the so they just so that blending really does disappear it's entirely up to you but you get the idea don't you so don't forget if you want to start in October, there's a little template I've made for you that's in the book now, in the files that we'll be starting, but we will give you an heads up nearer the time. Um, the prompts will be there. And like I say, we are linked with the official company. So that's all legit. Um, and there we go. All done. I hope you've enjoyed that. It's a bit of a stitching one. Um, I'm very happy um, to see people being, in, you know, doing it now and using our oh, UK tour. Yeah, that'd be good. Well, I'm hoping to do some at the um, Yes Glynis. Yeah, I mean, thank you, Glynis. I mean, at the monastery as the new reopening um, in Manchester. So, right. Thank you very much, everybody. And I will see you put an event out. It'll probably be, uh, what day is it now? It's Thursday. Probably Sunday or Monday, but probably Sunday. Um, and, you know, get your moodling gear on. We should all dress up for it, shouldn't we? So we can... Like, like we're partying maybe not <laughs> all right so take care gosh it's dark see you later i want to see you work as well little it's only a little thing but you know what i mean stitching time saving time i love them old saying i never know where they come from right i'm shutting up and going bye